So we've recently been blessed with the 2018.1 mid-yearly product subscription updates for Autodesk customers that the uh, the product teams have been forced to do these days. I wish they wouldn't. <laughs> That's a topic for a different video. Uh, and normally with Autodesk Vault, that means massive disappointment and nothing to write home about. But this year they've pulled it out of the bag and they've done something pretty special with the shared views. Shared views come in with the 2018.1 release for Vault Work Group and Vault Professional. If you're on Vault Basic, it sucks to be you. You'd still get 2018.1, but you don't get shared views with Vault Basic, I'm afraid. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what they are, how they work, what they do, and then towards the end of the video, I'll talk about my opinions on it and how I think it should be different. So shared views with Vault 2018.1. It solves a real problem that Vault's had for quite a while, and that was a problem with sharing data and sharing designs with people outside of your company who don't have access to your vault. There was ways of doing it in the past, but there, there were always detached, convoluted, long-winded, complicated, complex processes, uh, which re resulted in data being detached, people looking at old versions. Uh, it was just never all that slick. So shared views kind of solves that problem and does it pretty well. Disclaimer before we start, because this could be a deal breaker for a lot of people. This shared views technology is 100% cloud hosted. So if your company just do not allow anything to go into any cloud system, then you just can't use this. There is no alternative. There is no alternate configuration of using it. It's That's it. You just can't use it. Well, again, that's a, that's a discussion for a different day. I've got in my vault a drawing and an assembly, and I want to share these with either a customer, a supplier, a client, but I want to get some feedback from somebody who doesn't have access to this assembly inside my vault. So what I do is I turn on shared view. So you go to view at the top of your vault client, and then you tick shared view. This should be available after you've installed 2018.1 on your Vault client and your Vault server. And then on the right hand side, you get this shared views panel that can be moved around, docked, undocked, minimized, maximized, change size, that kind of thing. So, you know, usual window type, type of behavior. And then once that's enabled, you right click on your assembly drawing or part and then you select share the view. And what this does is it packages up your assembly into a cloud hosted format. Give it a name. So this is the name that the customer will see. It's the name of a session, and it allows you to differentiate this particular design from other designs you might share with other customers. So we can say feedback required on the GTX 970 design, for example. Click share, and then that's going to publish this design into the cloud. Absolutely nothing is hosted locally. There are no files in the vault. There are no extra bits and pieces stored inside the vault. It simply takes that assembly and then pushes it up into the Autodesk cloud. And then it gives you a couple of options after it's finished publishing it. Just a word of warning though. I mean, it's just something you've just kind of got to deal with on a, on a kind of first generation pass at this. Large assemblies can take quite a while to make. I've done this on an assembly of around 5,000 parts and it took about half an hour to do the shared view. Which is which is a bit longer than I would like it. By that point, you do start to think that it's actually crashed out, but it does take quite a while to process it. And even on something this small, it can still take a couple of minutes, which which is normal. I would say that's absolutely fine. And then once it's finished creating the, the publish up to the cloud, it gives you this very simplistic looking dialog box where it says feedback required on the GDX 970 design has been successfully uploaded. Here's two options. And this is how you transmit this shared view to the to the recipient you select copy link and then what you've got to do is open up your email client and then email the link to that person when the person receives the link let's do a bit of role playing now so i'm the client or the customer who's receiving your shared view i would open up my email take the link and then click the link or just paste the link into my internet browser and then what happens is the autodesk viewer launches in your browser and it just opens up that design straight away and this is an absolute kill a bit of kit there is no downloading anymore of stupid massive unnecessarily bloated viewers there's no browser plugins there's no messing around with anything it just boom straight away there it is so once they've got that open they can now navigate around your assembly and look at it in pretty high fidelity i mean this is pretty good quality for a viewer in a browser you've got to admit this is pretty smooth I and mean, i'm navigating a fair sized assembly which has got quite a lot of detail in it there's no parts dropping out there's no flashing, there's no image degradation, nothing. It's pretty solid. Towards the bottom of the viewer, you've got a few navigation tools, zooming in, zooming out, orbiting, panning, that kind of thing. We've got explosion mode, which which is pretty impressive for just showing off. <laughs> but it probably does have a use for, for larger, more complicated assemblies. But you grab the slide bar, and then you can explode that assembly out to view the assembly at component level. Uh, we've got the model browser. 
which if we shut down this views panel here, that opens up your model browser and you can see all of the parts in the assembly uh, in a structured hierarchical format, which is, which is nice if that's what you want. If you don't want that, I'm afraid at the moment that I can't find a way of excluding part information from being included in the shared view. So if you're looking to hide part numbers in browser nodes and that kind of thing, at the moment, I can't see a way of doing that with shared views from Vault. Right, if you do select a part and then select properties, you can see all the, the metadata for that particular part. Not all of it, not everything that Inventor stores, but quite a fair bit of information. We've got things like part number, we've got creation date, we've got some mass property information. And um, what we don't have are things like material uh, and mass, which might be good, that might be good for some people, but I would imagine if somebody doesn't want that kind of information included in the viewer, they probably don't want everything else included with this viewer. So a bit of work there, maybe, maybe some scope for configuring this in the future, I don't know, but at the moment this is pretty much what you get. And we've got a settings button which allows you to configure the visual settings within the, the viewer, and then also some navigation settings here as well, I'll not get too deep into those. Uh, up on the right hand side you've got the view cube which allows you to pick your orthographic viewpoints, top, right, front, back, that kind of thing, spin it around using the left mouse button on the view cube. Uh, just above that you've got a little toolbar which allows you to create comments, do, uh, do a print straight from the viewer and we've also got the ability to create a screenshot and then create a link if that person wants to send this on to somebody else from this point. What next then? What next? Again, role playing. I'm the customer, I'm the supplier and I need to feed back some information to you who's sent me this link. Well, we've got this markup button down here. Markup allows the uh, the recipient to create very, very basic markups here. We've basically got an arrow and a text. That's it. And also, in order for this person to mark up, they need to sign into the viewer with their Autodesk account. So this is the point where that person needs to create an account. If they just want to view it without sending you digital feedback, they don't need an account. If they want to send you back comments in the session, then they will need an account. So we can select mark up here, and then we can say, right, well, you know, point towards here, and then say, I don't know, you know where's, where's the image? and hit return and then maybe move that down tie it up a little bit and then click done uh, so once the the recipients done this markup they can say you know feedback from client acme limited whatever and then they can hit save that feedback is then stored into the session and it's then fed back to your vault client so carrying on with the role play if i go back to autodesk vault go to my shared views panel and then hit refresh you can see there's now one comment here. So if I click my shared view, you can see feedback from client Acme Limited is immediately stored into my share view panel. And that's done pretty quickly. That's done pretty quickly, it's very responsive. So we can now click this as me. I'm now in my office. I've sent this out to the client. They've sent their feedback. I can open this back up in my office and then see the feedback that they've put uh, into the the shared view, so it's pretty seamless. This is this is nice, really nice. It's fluid and it worked first time. That's the crucial thing here for me. It worked first time. And it was pretty easy to do. It was pretty easy to do. So there you go. That's that's shared views. That's the ability to send data outside of the vault, send it via a link to a third party. That third party opens the link. They see your design in their browser. I don't know which browsers are supported. I'm using Google Chrome here. I would imagine most major browsers are supported. And then that person just did a markup, hit done, and then it immediately came back to me. Seamless, it was pretty seamless. I'll show you the drawings. Drawings work pretty well as well. So we'll go to the DWG. We'll do a shared view of the DWG. Uh, GTX 1070 drawing for feedback. We'll wait for this to finish publishing. And then when that's done, you copy the link, same as you did with the assembly. Send that to the recipient. The recipient opens up their browser, pastes in the link, and then just like it did with the assembly, that'll open up the drawing into the viewer. And then because it's all vector-based, you get this measure button at the bottom on drawings, which would be nice if that was in assemblies, but I couldn't see it. Uh, and then you can measure point to point in a drawing and then take dimensions straight from within the viewer, which is really nice. And then the whole host of navigation tools, set quality settings, that kind of thing are available to you with drawings, just like they were with assemblies as well. So that's shared views. It's really nice. Got to say well done to the Vault team for this. This is a good first pass. There are some things to improve and which I think should be different. 
So that's what we'll do from this point onwards. So if that was all you're interested in, just seeing how it works, that was it. From this point onwards, it's just my opinions on the technology and how I think it should be different. So starting with, well, with the name of it, Shared Views, I just think there could be a much better way of describing what this is than calling it a shared view. So I've just shown you everything that this tool does. Would you describe it as being a view? Are we sharing a view here? It's subjective, but I don't think so. We're sharing a design. I think they should have named this something like online collaboration or shared design, design sharing, something like that. Because when a user who hasn't had any training, and a lot of users don't get training, and also a lot of users, in fact, the vast majority of users don't subscribe to YouTube channels like mine and look out in their own time for things to help them do the job better. They just go to work and then go home. So for a lot of people that just happen to come across this and see it in the drop down menu, they're just not going to know that shared views does what I've just shown you. And Autodesk have a history of this. It's not just the Vault team. They introduce new technology. They give it a silly name that doesn't correspond to what it actually does. It just passes people by. So I think the name could have been a lot better than shared views. That's something that they could change in the future, but they probably won't. But that's just a minor point. I think it should have been called something a lot better than shared views. The next thing which I think they could have done a lot better, and it's something which they can iterate on in the future as a first pass right now, it's fine. But it's what happens after the shared view's been created. So what I'll do is I'll create a new shared view of this, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And it's this thing here, shared view complete. What do you want to do next? As the person creating the view, I can open it up in the browser to make sure that what I've created and what I'm going to send to the recipient looks okay. And that's what view and browser does. And then this is the only option here that we have for actually sending it out to the recipient. Copy link. When you click it, link copy to the clipboard and then it goes. If you happen to then accidentally copy something else to the clipboard before you paste it into an email, well then you've lost the link. You're going to have to view in browser and then find the link within the Autodesk Cloud View, which is a nightmare. Uh, or you can go here and you can get the link from there. But it would be better if that copy link button didn't just vanish and you could just re-click it. But secondly, I just think there would be better ways of sending the information to the recipient other than having to manually open up your own email client and paste a link in there. We're working with Vault Professional here. Also, Vault Workgroup could have had this implemented into it. You could maybe have a back-end email client within Autodesk Vault where you could create maybe a group of people plug in their email addresses and then when you get to this point here you get an expandable list of vault users or people that have been pre-programmed into vault and you can just tick the people who you want to send this link to and then Autodesk Vault can either fire up your email client and then paste in the link or it would just send it straight out from vault via an email to the recipients rather than you have to manually do it yourself. Another way of doing it would perhaps be to integrate this with the Autodesk A360 accounts. Again, you'd have to go into the Vault server perhaps or the administration settings and then pre-program in all the A360 accounts of people who you would want to send the link to. And then once this shared view has been created, it would automatically publish the link to the people you tick here and then just publishes it straight into their A360 account. That would be better as well. Uh, but ultimately, this is a nice manual, simple way of doing it. I just think there will be a good way of iterating on this in the future by using one of those options, in my opinion. Right, the other thing which I think could be better, right, once we open up the viewer itself, and when I say could be better, I mean this is an absolute deal breaker for a lot of people, and that is the fact that the online cloud viewer doesn't support images. I should have a couple of stickers on top of these fans, and there should be a sticker here. The online viewer does not support decals, and that is an absolute deal breaker, because what happens is the client's going to see that, and the client who doesn't use Autodesk software doesn't understand the irregularities that Autodesk have with their software now and again, they're just going to think that there is no sticker there. Where's my sticker? Where's my warning label? Where's my logo? Where's my images? And they're going to have to strike up a dialogue with the person who sent them the link, and that person's going to have to then investigate. That person's then going to have to Google it, ask Autodesk support, why is there no images? It's just going to waste time. I guarantee you it will waste time. That person who sent out the link isn't going to immediately know that this doesn't support images. And then that's just embarrassing. It's going to be dialogue that you'd rather not have. Just support images. The DWF format and the Autodesk Design Review Viewer supports images. This is a backward step. It's a deal breaker for some people. This needs to be fixed. Not the usual Autodesk, well, we'll fix it in the future maybe, you know, maybe in the future. No, it needs to be fixed pretty pronto. It needs to support images. And then the final thing with regards to exporting out into the Cloud Viewer from Vault, which I think could be a lot better, is just the control of what 
IP is included in the model. At the moment, it doesn't look like you've got a lot of options for including or excluding metadata and properties with the parts. You just get what you're given. There should be some kind of configurable to in include or exclude certain model properties, part numbers, that kind of thing, and in including more information than it currently has. Uh, but other than that, I think the rest of the issues that I've got with this are actually localized to the viewer itself rather than what the Vault team are doing. Things like the measure tool not being enabled in the Cloud Viewer in part or assembly mode. There is no measure button here at all. It's only accessible when you're in a drawing. And also once you're signed in, the markup tools are pretty limited. All you've got is the arrow and the text, and that's it. Especially given that design review, which has been around for a long time, that's got an extensive suite of markup tools with revision clouds, squares, circles, stamps, that kind of thing, to take a massive backward step for this futuristic cloud view to only have an arrow and a text tool is, it's the usual Autodesk thing, isn't it, though? It's like, oh, it's the first iteration, you know, we're taking a backward step and we'll eventually get to where we were before. But that's not on the Vault team, that's the Cloud Viewer itself, which should be iterated on and improved in the future. But I think that's about it. That's that's shared views for Vault 2018.1. And like I say, there are a few more things which I think could be improved on, but it is localized to the viewer. With regards to what the Vault team have done, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed with how smooth it was and the fact that it worked first time for me. And that is really important because when a user uses something new like this, if it doesn't work first time, if there's some kind of weird irregularity with it, it puts them off and they never use it again. But this did work first time. It was fast. There was no waiting around for comments to come back. The link was generated immediately. It was in the cloud immediately. There was no waiting around. It was just seamless and I applaud them for that. It is a very, very good first pass at this technology and it's something which I encourage you to use if you think this could be useful for you and your company has no objections to using cloud hosted designs. All right, guys, that'll do it for this one. Thank you very much. I do training courses over on Pluralsight. If you're interested in understanding a bit more about Vault Professional, I've got a full Autodesk Vault Professional installation and setup course over on Pluralsight. I've also got a couple of event courses over there. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to head on over and sign up for a free trial to get access to those courses. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.